morning and welcome to Friday's Financial Fitness. Today I want to wrap up our discussion about the three factors that affect market volatility. If you remember, the first two were the Federal Reserve's monetary policy, and the second was the slowing global as well as the U.S. economy. Today I want to spend a few minutes talking about the upcoming political elections. Historically, investors do not like change, and specifically when it relates to the leadership of our country or the president. When we look at uncertainty, the first uncertainty is that we don't have a presidential incumbent coming back into the office. President Obama has been in the office for two terms, and regardless of the party or popularity, a departing two-term president creates a void that the financial markets tend not to like, and that ultimately creates some volatility. Some people have indicated that certain parties generally tend to move the markets higher or lower. However, if we look back historically, neither party or affiliation gives us any clues about which candidate might help or hurt our investments. From a market perspective, the general idea has been that the Republicans are the party of the business and the Democrats are the party for the labor. That theory is pretty much unfounded when it comes to the market. During President Franklin Roosevelt's leadership, the Dow Jones nearly tripled and he was under the Democratic Party. And then also under the Democratic Party is when the market went way up when Bill Clinton was in office. Also under the Republican Party, when Ronald Reagan and Dwight D. Eisenhower were in office, the markets went up. So it's not specific to any particular party, and there can certainly be different views and opinions on what parties mean in terms of the economic growth as well as the overall stock market. I think my general advice as it pertains to the volatility is that you're going to continue to see heightened volatility with these uncertainties, but obviously we need to take a longer term perspective and stay focused on your own goals and also take a look at the broader economic trends and how they're shaping the U.S. economy. Investors who have been willing to endure volatility have tended to be rewarded with the disciplined investor, and often the greatest rewards come as it pertains to the returns that immediately follow the most significant downturns in the market. I hope you've enjoyed these segments on volatility, and again, I suggest you stay focused on your overall goals and not be focused on the media.